All that. You ready to get started, sound like? Nah, I mean. Right. You ready? We'll start it right now. Come on. Nah. Jay Win. I ain't rushing <laughs> Play me some pimping, <laughs> man. Shit Come don't on, even man. start until yeah, we let the pimping play for a few minutes and okay. warm the crowd up. Yo, I, I ain't gonna play some I was on time today. Yeah, you definitely did your shit. Yeah, you were. We saw you. Yeah, I you was, was on there. time month. On some real, we got the real hustler, nigga man. shit. Yeah. You ain't got no hustler yeah, music? We got some hustler music. They had it this, man. I know you got some shit. Yo, why you didn't play that from the beginning? That's the one you should have came in with. Hey, why you didn't play that from the beginning? Hey, because I asked for some pimp and you, I forgot we had the hustle in here. Hold up, don't fuck with her. Chill out. Who we got in this room? We got the hustler. Chill out. Who we got? Oh, y'all more that? I said, I said, don't fuck with her. Yo, no. Who we got in this room? We got the hustler. Yeah. Yeah. I said, don't fuck with her. Yeah. Yo, who we got in this room? We got the hustler. The hustler. Okay, what do you want? Recap a 3-5. Uh-huh. Chill out. Uh-huh. Who we got in this room? We got the hustler. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. I said, don't fuck with her. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Who we got in this room? We got the hustler. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, when you ain't got nothing to say, you just say, okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When you ain't got nothing to say, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I say, I say, I say, don't fall with her. Hold up. Who we got in the room? We got the hustler. Uh, uh, I say don't fuck with her, y'all. Yeah. Who we got in the room? We got the hustle, uh, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. What come you gonna say on, then? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I passed it, nigga. Nah, you, you was bodying it too much, man. I ain't wanna fuck it up, man. Yeah, 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 I don't trust these bitches. I'm wearing a condom right now. Uh. <laughs> Swear to God, just in case something pop off. And I don't want no baby kids to get shot off. <laughs> I call this right bitch now. a babysitter. The Put the babysitter right throw it now. She a babysitter. Yeah. Yeah. And I ain't playing yeah. with her. Yeah. Told her she want a relationship. Get another nigga. Another nigga. Cause I'm the nigga on the side. Yeah, Don't yeah. call me when you got somewhere to go. Call me when you need a ride. Yeah. Cause it's deeper deep than rap. To go. <laughs> if you want me to tell you what I mean, I'm just gonna explain it like that. Yeah. See, don't hit me when you need four tires. Yeah. Just hit me when you need a little L on the side. Yeah. Don't call me when you need a refrigerator full. Yeah. Call me when you want a sandwich and a Red Bull. Ooh. Yeah. Cause I don't give no fucks. Yeah. I'm not gonna be stopping every day to go and get you Starbucks. Yeah. No. Cause I'm just that nigga. Uh, yeah. Who gonna come by, kick and smoke a couple blunts with you. Yeah. Hey. And we don't never take no pictures. Okay. okay. And if you see me, have your kids call me Mr. Yeah. <laughs> because it's all about respect. And when you ask for that little money, I gave you cash and not a check. Yeah. Not yeah. a check. And I be spitting straight facts. All right. I gave her cash money, no cash app. Right. Come on. She tried to act like a nigga didn't really do that. Okay. And I don't want to get too, you know. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I get mad and when she, I talk about money. Yeah. See, niggas laugh. I'm on their ass because it ain't really funny. Yeah. See, people get that paper and don't even want to call you back. Yeah. They don't want to pay you back and they be like, I call you back. Yeah. <laughs> That's that bullshit. Yeah. And I don't play with it. Play with I it. pull that better bitch house just to see who she's staying with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who name is on the bill? Yeah. I go act like I'm shitting and read the names on the bill. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yes! Yeah. The boys in the bathroom. <laughs> and who you get it from? Come on. <laughs> and that ain't got shit to do with nothing. Welcome back to the 85 South Show. <laughs> Listen. Yo.
Listen. Hold hey, on. Listen. Listen. Now, you know I always have to go look and see where we fall in the rankings of great shit. What we do, man? Come on, man. The 85 South Show is rated higher than that week that they play all the Roots movies. (laughs) You know when they play the whole Roots all the way through that week of TV? Yeah. We tested higher than that week. Yes, we did. I think that week was what started Black History Month. Come on, man. We ain't bullshit. Come on, man. He <laughs> said, come on, man. Come on, man. We Kunta doing great shit niggas. every week and don't nobody mm-hmm. want to even talk about Kunta it. Kunta and them niggas. Kunta and them niggas. They kept it flipped. What's the lady name? I couldn't remember her name. Who that? You talking about LeVar Burton? Then they had the Chicken George. Chicken George. They yeah. had a bunch of kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lou Gossett Jr. was Chicken George. No, that Y'all was the other dude. Y'all still talking about Roots? Um, the singing oh. dude. <laughs> the singing dude? <laughs> we saw it. What's his name? see it. Yeah, Van Vereen was singing to yeah. He wasn't a singer. He was Van Rames. I Who think, was I the fiddle? I ain't seen any of the roots. I only seen Who like the, the third one. Lou Gossett Jr. played the fiddle. Okay, yeah. That's and right. then some kind of way that shit went from LeVar Burton to the daddy from Good Time. <laughs> <laughs> he got older and turned into, uh, yeah, he turned into James. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He went from reading Rainbow to Good Time. <laughs> On the yeah. same network. On a commercial break. <laughs> you came back with commercial, this nigga was old and grown. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck happened to Kunta? Yeah. <laughs> what James doing here? <laughs> I never believed that. James ain't whooped the master's ass. <laughs> what? what? James whooped what? They got James in there? <laughs> James got his ass whooped. That's why I could never see him as just James Evans. Right. Right. He was Kunta Kente too. But that ain't got nothing to do with none of this it's shit, man. Cool. We've been on a fucking streak over here, and we've been bringing all the ghetto legends. Ghetto Who legend, we got, man. nigga? Hey, man. Say, man. This is one of them Come ones on. that had to be, it had to be had. Man, if you ain't, if you ain't talking no money, man, get the fuck away from me, man. We only bring ghetto legends, hustlers. Come on, man. People who made something out of nothing. Come, Come on, on, man. The Philly. best dancers. Philly the best the rappers. The best everything. Right. And when we say ghetto legends, that mean like you forever gonna have your name. Your journey. Hall of Fame. Fucking Hall of Fame of ghetto it's shit. In the yes. pantheon. <laughs> Gotta bring the best strippers. Come on, yeah, see, that's why on. you up there. Can't you always you always got the best fucking add-ons and ideas. Mm-hmm. But you were in the game, still in the game when the shit was actually good to be in. Mm-hmm. Had the, he said he had the number one, the first platinum ringtone. You don't never run these type of accolades down and shit, isn't it? Right. First. Went and made all them niggas say, man, put the beat on. God damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You never heard a nigga rap like that. What'd he say about the dog house? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Right. None other than Cassidy. Hey. Come on, let's go. Literally sit here and home, do bro. this shit all day about on, all the man. great cool shit you done did for the rap game. And man, you you battle rapping now, dropping music still, still got shit money, iced up, new outfit match. That's how you know a nigga still got his money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when that nigga match. Nigga, nigga match. Nigga, everything yeah. match. Yeah, nigga, yeah. when a nigga match. <laughs> nigga, when you, <laughs> see most when you when you ain't got shit, you right. wear clothes. Right. When you straight, you have outfits. Right. Yeah. No cap. Look at the women. They know yeah. the difference between clothes and outfits. Fat. That nigga got an outfit on. <laughs> that nigga hat ain't that's moved some, yet. That's some shit outfit. you can wear on the first day of school. I that's that's outfit. Right there. I'm like, how the hell that boy gonna fit perfect? He don't wear Your mama right. see you that's in there and be like, that's a nice <laughs> outfit, son. <laughs> You bitch see you in some bullshit, you just put on some clothes, huh? Yeah. Oh, oh, you just put on everything, huh? <laughs> you just put on some clothes. This what you wearing? This what you wearing? I thought you said you was just gonna put some clothes on. Did you got on an outfit? I didn't know. I didn't know you was wearing an outfit. Where you going? Nah. Welcome to the trap. Man. What's good, appreciate bro? Appreciate y'all for having me, man. Glad to have you. It's hilarious, man. Man, appreciate, appreciate it. We just man, being glad here, to have you, know, you just, <laughs> just making sure everything go the way it's supposed to go, holding it down. That was a dope story you just told, too. Word. Fuck with it. Sneaking in the bathroom, act like you're taking the shit. I will the grab on, read all yeah. the pills. Bubby I want to know. Bubby yes, I will Google your medicine. 
<laughs> I don't know what the fuck going on with you. <laughs> I, did, I done did that before. Yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what yeah, the fuck is that cinematography? Bitch, why is your iron low? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so she got the, okay. She crazy a little He's bit. Just a little bitch, bit. why is your iron low? <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's hard. <all. laughs> <laughs> What's been up, though, man? Working hard, grinding, man. That's all we ever do. Fuck Grandin. Bird. Trying to get it right, coupons, man. man. Put the best project together in my life, I think. Right it's now? Super dope. You like this album? Yeah, I love it. The best app, the best project of your life? Yeah. What's the name man. of it? Bars is back. Ooh. People don't even know your name, Bars. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Bars yeah, is back. back. I'm back Bars with my bullshit. So, happy with this project, man. A lot of dope shit. You inspired a lot of people, man. Hope I can play that shit for y'all, man. Let y'all yeah. hear some shit. Hell yeah, yeah. You know, the people gonna wanna hear it anyway. They sitting at home trying to figure out what the hustler finna say. So, so bring us back. How it all started? Because I know earlier off camera you saying you with the Rough Rider. I ain't know nothing about none of that shit. Because I definitely had your ring. He wasn't outside yet. You know that? He wasn't outside yet. I was, because I had the ring time on the church. That happened too young to even church. That was out. That was after. But that that was, that's what that I'm trying was, to yeah. tell you. That was when you were 21. That was four years ago. I was damn near. Three. <laughs> <laughs> what you want me to be saying? Google, y'all got motherfucker. <laughs> so bring us back, like you. Was... <laughs> 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 nigga, three like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> three. Oh, oh nigga, three. <laughs> <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> 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 he was still at that age. If you yell at him, he start crying. Don't have that bad. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna I tell your ass. <laughs> I, I used to pee in the bed so I won't lay down. <laughs> I, mean, I won't go in there, it's the thing. Yo. <laughs> this nigga is crazy, crazy, bro. That's why your you skin was fucked up. You some shit that just let me That's know, why bro. your skin was fucked up all that time. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, that, <laughs> nigga, skin, <laughs> nigga, nigga skin just, just got man. right four months ago. <laughs> nigga gave himself eczema. <laughs> 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 nigga elbows hard than a motherfucker sleeping in that piss ass bed every night <laughs> with the fan <laughs> on. <laughs> you might as well, you might as well pour the ammonia on yourself, nigga. <laughs> How you gonna piss in the bed with the fan on, man? <laughs> no, you pissy and cold. Piss don't dry up. You right, baby? That's funny, boy. That's funny. <laughs> this nigga here, man. Catch him up. Tell him how this shit started out. <laughs> Cause I remember when you came on the rap scene with a big ass hat and a big ass t-shirt. Nigga, everybody put a hat on. Nigga had a big ass hat and a big ass t-shirt. Goddamn chain hanging down to his belly button. Big shit was in, man. I mean, the back at them old pictures like, damn, niggas were super baggy, man. Nigga, we wore, we wore way too many clothes. Man, I don't know what the fuck we thought was gonna happen. This is, this is what, like, 01, 02? <laughs> This nigga dumb as hell, bro. Oh. I told you he fucked up, bro. Oh, shit. Oh, that's funny. Oh, you stupid. Come at me, gang. Hey man, I can't be around this nigga too oh. long, bro. It's been too long. Oh shit. Yeah, everybody was in that bag back then. Nah, for real, oh. big clothes was the shit. Everybody had extra fabric, man. Tall tees, nigga. I'm talking about, it's to the point now, if you see some jeans that's too big, it just piss you off. That's what they all about, the young people. They wearing the baggy shit. Nah, I think we, I they think we back, back at a point because of the internet, where we at right now, it's like anything go. We could be tight, baggy, could be in like any any time period right now, and you know what I mean, be an individual. I think it's different right now. Oh, no. crazy. I couldn't fuck with them big ass jeans again. I, I tried. Was, I couldn't. I was like a size 12 wearing a 34. 
12. That ain't even no pants size. That's like when it. I was a child. <laughs> size 12. That nigga wasn't even in adult pants yet. I'm like a 12. Nigga, that's that. I was, I, I was seven. <laughs> Would you want me to be a 32? <laughs> I was wearing kid clothes. All right, man. <laughs> Tell him how this shit started. He wasn't but three. Today's episode is sponsored by SeatGeek. Hey, what's up? It's your boy DC Young Fly. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more. With football season in the full swing, you don't want to miss out, all right? Now, SeatGeek has your tickets to every game. You can see Drake. You can even see tickets to our stuff, man. The 85 South Tour is all on SeatGeek. Yes, they put all the tickets across the web in one place to make sure that you are getting a great deal. Each ticket is rated on a scale of 1 to 10, so look for the green dots. Green means good, red means bad, all right? That means like red meat, you might be, they might be good for folks who ain't got enough money. Because that no bleed, but don't, don't, don't think it mean bad. It just means that you, you might not have a good vision of what you came to see. And you know what? Every ticket is bagged by their buyer guarantee and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event and swap it. So that's right, if you made a mistake, you can swap it on SeatGeek. And you know I came through for my guys, so use my code 85SOUTH for $20 off your tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off. Now, we already talked about the red dots and you getting $20 off? Go ahead and use our code 85SOUTH. So make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. All right, get your tickets on seat gig. I be there, row 30, three, one to three tickets. Do I get all three or they just, okay, each? Okay, nah, that's just one. Well, it look like I'm going by myself. Quantity, can't go by yourself. Ah, yes, I can. Let's do it. E Started in the city in Philly. Um, into this radio competition called The Cypher. It was like on the radio show. Started winning battles for like months and months at a time. That's how I got popular in the city. Met Swiss Pop in the barbershop. He brought me out in New York to meet his brothers, D and Y. They was the CEOs of Rough Riders. And um, that's how I got my first deal, like in 9-9. Damn. You was how old? 17. 17? Yeah. And you got your whole deal just off the radio shit and really from that intro? And you just... You well, the radio on? show is what made me um, get popular enough to meet Source Father when he came through the city. Okay. He brought me out in New York. I ain't have no demo or no music done. When he introduced me to Y, I right. just started rapping. You know what I mean? And you went crazy. Y loved me. He waited. I had to meet his brother, D. D came through. I started rhyming for him. Um, and at this time, I was in a three-man group called Larceny Family. You go back and do like, look at Rough Rider, Rider Die, Volume 2, <coughs> Volume 3, we was on there, you know what I mean? Little niggas, you know what I mm -hmm. mean? That's how I built my relationship with Swiss, being signed to Rough Riders and all that. So, um, I was grinding with them for some years, and then I, the Swiss wanted to do his own production company, one of the artists, so he came, got me, we started Full Surface Records, got a deal with J Records, Clive Davis, and that's how we put out all the music, like I'm a hustler and all that shit you fuck with. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, man. I tried to make it long story short as possible. Nah, you, no, you did it. I wanted to hear more shit. I'm I had really, you can make I wanted to tell all this shit. Longer than that. <laughs> like detail. Oh, wow. Cause Rough Riders was popping at the time. Man, like, you are DMX, what? Jada Kiss? E. What? Lush. E. What's, what's shorty, the, the Charlie Baltimore? Nah, what she, she, she want nah, with y'all? Nah, What Charlie sure. Baltimore with? She was entertainment. She yeah. was with like entertainment she was, came in. I always thought she was a rough rider. Her demeanor was a. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I always thought she was a rough she rider. She did a lot of shit with murder. She from Philly though. Mm. We're from the same city. Oh, okay. okay. That's what she did it with murder. She Ain't. did murder Ain't. and some early like like a little few little Rockefeller joints in the beginning. Right, right, right. I don't know why I always thought she was a rough rider. She nah. was just gangster. Eve was rough rider. He was a rough rider. Drag on. Uh, that nigga was cold. Nah, they had it on Smash when I was when I was 17 when I first signed <laughs> to them. They was super lit. Mm -hmm. Like X was moving heavy. The whole label was like moving. They have they they was like the biggest thing around. So it's one of your I favorite like, DMX stories. DMX? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um 
the time when we did the BET cipher, it was like when they first started um like having niggas rap on the on the BET awards and shit. Mm -hmm. And it was me, DMX, Eve, and Murder Moot. And we had like a cipher. So it was dope. I ain't so never did. Rap and Murder Moot? Yeah. He was Cause he was down with Rough Riders at one time too. Okay. So we was all representing like Rough Riders, mm -hmm. X, Eve, me, and Moot. And it was like a cipher. We was all around. And Moot went first. I went second. Then Eve went. Then X went. That's hard. Right. That's hard. <clears throat> yeah, but that was a memorable moment because I never did no records with X. Like even though I was on Rough Riders for that period of time, and he was super lit, we never did no records together. So um, that was like the closest thing of like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Having some edge in the stone that I did with him, that BET cipher shit. You okay. Mean? Eve out there doing billionaire shit now. A what? She yeah. going hard. <laughs> she got a whole ass billionaire out there. Eve know how to get to it, man. Hell yeah. For sure. I always That's Philly to too. <laughs> Philly shit. Yeah. City. Philly got, got some motherfuckers that came out that bitch hitting, man. Y'all got a strong music, like, just seen. We was talking about it even earlier with the uh, the battle rap shit, so, like, how that shit, like, that's that's got you going, right? And how long did that continue on? What made you, you know, get back into it? And why is battle rap part of y'all culture? Like, I mean, cause that's how I learned. I learned from up top, some no shit. Like, that's how y'all were, were rapping. Like, that's what y'all call music. Um, it's real competitive in the city, you know what I mean? Niggas was always trying to be lyrical because we like close to New York, like the Mecca. It's like right there. Close to Jersey where a lot of the legends is from, like we like right there. Right. So we knew how to be lyrical, we knew all of the slang and all of the terminologies. We knew how to jump in that bag. Right. But at the same time, we further south and like in a different place, so we got our own accent, mm -hmm. our own way we put words and sound. So it was like distinctive, you know what I mean? But it's like a real competitive place. Like with everything, with sports, with just living, grinding, yeah. whatever you do is like a competitive place. So because niggas was trying to be lyrical and niggas was competitive, you get battle rap, you right. know what I mean? Right. But it was different forms of it, like, um, like, you know, as hip hop evolved, right. the way people battle rap evolved. You know what I'm saying? Like this way y'all look at battle rap now, it, it didn't always exist. Like the right. way people battle was different. And a lot of times it was like cypher style. Like you rap, I rap, like we just ciphering. And it's like who the best or who could last the longest. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay, y'all weren't going at each other then. Like but like, you know, directly saying shit about the person that's across from you. Right. Looking at the nigga face and, you know what I mean, being aggressive and disrespecting the nigga and trying to destroy the nigga in front of you. Yeah. Like, with just bars. Like, not really no flow. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Not trying to flow to a beat or make a song. You just trying to lyrically just break this <clears throat> nigga down with bars. Like, that form came later, and I'm a big part of that. Right. Like, you know what I mean? So when you say you're a big part of that, what do what you say that it, when it switched, when you came in the game and you showed them how to stop being aggressive and we're going to be lyrically? Well, um, now nah, battle rap was always in the city, but like I said, it was a different version of it. So I was on the radio on the Cypher show right. winning for months at a time. I got super famous in the city. All of the big people from the city know about this show, listen to it, was fans of it, like, right. you know what I mean? The ratings was crazy. It was already your one station, so the power station was suffering when this shit came on. It was like that lit, yeah. right. you know what I mean? So I was holding that shit down for a long period of time. But this is back in the day before the internet. Like right. now, if I was winning a radio show like that, it'd be something connected to it. Niggas would go to social media, see what I look like, where I'm from, learn about right. me, you know what I mean? Right. Get into okay. my music. Okay. But back then, this was before the internet. Right. So niggas was super fans, but nobody knew what I looked like. Right. You know what I mean? Word of mouth. And they were saying that I was young, and they could hear in my voice that I'm probably like a young boy, but I'm super nice. So, you know what I mean? It was hard for niggas to know what I looked like. So I started 
traveling around and just battling, spitting, like, you know what I mean? Challenging everybody so that they could connect this nigga from the radio with how I really am and how I really look. Right, right. It's a um, place called Broad Nolony in the city. It's like where a bus depot, where a bunch of buses and trains come to. So it's like, no matter what school you go to in the city, like, you know what I mean? A lot of people meet up in this place after school. Like, right. it'd be like hundreds of thousands of kids out there. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just all meeting up in this one location. But my high school was like right up the street. So after I get out of school, I walk down the street to Broad Nolony. And this way, not just people from my high school, but from high schools all around the city would meet up at. Right. And that's why I would have ciphers at and battle every day. So, you know, a lot of famous artists that come from the city passed through there, mm -hmm. seen it, you know what I mean? Experienced it, witnessed it, because it was every day. Yeah. Like, we was out there just <clears throat> going crazy, like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So, a combination of me winning this radio show cypher and then battling in the street like that and carrying it is mm -hmm. what made me super popular. So, anybody came through the city, like, who hot or who's... Next, mm -hmm. my name was coming up. Yeah. So that's how I was getting wild opportunities and, you know what I mean, meeting people and figuring shit out because of that, right. you know what I mean? So you had to do your own promo. Like, I need to go out here, let it be known that I'm fucking out here. Right. How you knew to do that? Like, Self at market. the age, you just figured that shit out? How the fuck you was just like... Yeah, because... Um, I think the best marketing marketing plan is like staying true to the culture. And I found out that I wanted the rap when I was in the fourth grade. Right. So this before I had bills, kids, and responsibilities. I just wanted to be the best. Right. I ain't care about the money or the business. I just right. wanted to keep impressing people with what I wrote down. Right. So for that reason, you know what I mean, is the reason why I made a lot of decisions. So me winning this radio competition, it steps in the direction of me being the best like I want to be. But now I need people to know what I look like, who I am. So now I'm in the street battling it. anybody that say they rap. Right. Then I told you I got the deal with Rough Riders when I was 17. I thought when you get a deal, it's over. Like, you get a deal and you get money and you just out and it's just like, they just make a song and they just put it out. Right. Right. That's what I thought the deal was. But it was just a production deal to Rough Riders. Like, I didn't have an actual deal, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, to a major. So it was no budgets, no money. They had studios that I was able to record in, and I was able to be around all that energy, like right. you said, X, Eve, right. all these people. But I didn't have a budget for myself or for my group to record right. music or to put it out, right. to get it on the radio. We ain't even had no marketing and promotion budgets. Yeah. So it was like a test period, like to see if you had what it takes to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. But it was difficult when you were around people like DMX and all this energy that's already selling all these records. It's like, yo, when you gonna get your opportunity? So years is passing and like I said, we was on Rough Rider, Ride, Ride, Ride or Die Volume 2 and Volume 3. So we was doing stuff, but it's one record. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? It's right. not like we the main focus. So me knowing that is what made me jump back in that battle bag. Right. Like, in order to get what I need and get people to focus on me and know that I'm a priority, right. is to battle everybody. Right. So anybody that say that they rap, Anybody that I ever see that got bars, <laughs> I'm going at them right. and prove that I'm better than them because a lot of niggas got situations and opportunities. So if I'm better than them, then you know that I need one too. Yeah. Right. So that's what I start doing. And because I was signed to Rough Riders and we like from a, it's like a battle type of environment, mm -hmm. I said now DMX, the locks, drag, Eve, none of them don't got to battle no more. Like, anybody that come through here, they got to go, they got to battle me. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? They could just chill. Right. Yeah. You the gunner. Unless they, unless they run through me and nobody couldn't. You know what I'm saying? So, ever since I came around, they ain't have to battle no more. Right. And by me battling so much is what got my name known and what made Swiss want me as a solo artist, which helped me get out the Rough Riders deal and get into a new deal. Right. And then get... The real deal, which was with Jay Records and Clive Davis to open up the budgets to be able to get in the studio, get niggas like R. Kelly on records, right. you know what I mean? Put it out on the radio and millions of people hear it and it's right in your face. 
You know what I'm saying? So the, Swiss, so the Swiss come to you personally like, yo, I want to fuck with you. Even to sell, like, I, I went gold. Like, you know what I mean? I went gold my first project. But, you know, um, now with the streaming and all that, like, you know what I mean? It's probably even more than that. But from the very beginning, I went gold on my first project, right? But this by yourself. Yeah, and this was not like the digital days. Like this is when real physical hard copies were selling out yeah, the store. Yeah, you gotta get that big. Right? Yeah, but to get a CD, to get a CD printed up, you know what I'm saying? It might cost a dollar or two. You know what I'm saying to make a CD. You know what I mean with the artwork packaged up. You know what I mean, and then put in the right place for a nigga to buy it. So if you're paying two dollars a CD and you want to go gold and sell five hundred thousand records, then that's a million dollars that you need to just put into buying CDs alone. Right. Not including marketing and promotion, not including your recording budgets, not including your events and you traveling around and trying to make the shit make sense. Right. Not including your features, your producers, your studio time, none of that. Right. I'm just talking about just for CDs alone. If you want to go gold or platinum. If you want to go platinum and sell a million records, you had to get a million CDs printed up. Right. So even if you could get a good rating as a dollar a CD, that's still a million dollars right. that you need up front. That you need up front. So that's why it was hard for uh, the average nigga to come out and pop, because niggas ain't got them type of budgets. Mm. So you got to get a deal. You got to go through them companies. Same way now, like even though we got technology and niggas feel like they more independent, niggas don't got the type of money to own like a portal to like bring out your music right now. Right. So you got to partner up with somebody that own a portal big enough to release your music. Right, and they taking all the money. Yeah, so niggas not really independent now. It's the same shit. Did you hear that shit Snoop said about the streaming? What he said about how it's like, yeah, it's cool how you can run these numbers up and and he asked the question, like, how can an artist get a billion streams and not have a million dollars? Thanks. And he was like, yeah, this shit sound good, but where the fuck is the money? Whoever's running this streaming shit is hiding the money. Oh, yeah. they definitely hiding. They, they paying yeah. you. Then you got a you got a damn near. Or somebody got listed your shit. Twenty five thousand times. Yeah, it'd be like some unreal shit that don't even make but sense. You get five dollars. It's up to the artist to figure it out. You can't expect the people that's like in the position of these labels to figure out how streaming going to work, right. get their legal team to put together a plan, figure it out, and just present it to the artist, because what do they get out of that? Right. It's up to you to figure it out before they figure it all the way out, which they doing right now. Right. That's true. The same way, like, with physical out. record selling, how they had that figured out. Right. It's the same way they're going to figure this digital shit out. It's just new. But what's crazy about it is a stream don't got an exact number of what it is. Like right. every it do, platform. It but they don't let it be known. And I'm just saying every platform pay different for what a stream is worth. Like right. every right. platform would say a stream is worth different amounts. Right. So even if you do got a billion streams, it's like from where? Right. From 36, a bunch of different platforms 15, that pay yeah. all different amounts for a stream. Right. So it's hard to figure out what that, that's worth in is like little percentages. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yo, 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 what's happening? It's your boy DC Young Fly. Prize Picks is the easiest way to play daily fantasy, all right? Now, getting started is so easy, all right? You register for an account, make a deposit, and pick more or less on two to six player stats to win payouts up to 25 times your entry. That is a lot of money. All first time users that deposit and use 85 South will receive a 100% instant deposit matchup to $100. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you a hundred. If you deposit 50, they gonna give you 50. Available in over 30 states. Head over to Prize Picks right now by tapping in the link below and tell them 85 South Central. Now download Prize Picks today and play daily fantasy sports. Make sure you use the code. I promo code 85 South when you sign up. All right? Now go ahead. Get your, get your, get your fantasy pick on. Get your, get your, get your, get your fantasy pick on. Why we ain't playing? Let's see. Let's, 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 let's. Eight time my money, twenty dollars will win me one sixty and place entry. It's different from how it was when y'all, like you said, coming back from back then when you was rapping. You knew the copies, you knew the, the money that was being made. Shit, the ringtone bag was crazy. crazy. Ringtone. I mean, you, you hopped in that that lane when you was like, motherfucker, buying my ringtone. 
Yeah, that was like the that was first form of then. technology. That was like, nine, nine, was in but it was, was like a clip. Then. It was like motherfucker was paying a dollar just to get 30 I'm seconds off. It, it, it. it was in yeah. the direction yeah. of going like digital. Yeah. You don't got to go actually there. buy the shit. Right, like I ain't have to buy the just song. Just on my phone, I could download it and hear it. It's like in that direction. So it was like the future. So everybody was on it. Plus phones. You know, back in the day, niggas ain't even had phones. Niggas had beepers, and you had to use the payphone. So when cell phones start getting more popular, and the price went to where the average person could afford it, now everybody want a phone. So everybody got phones. So if my phone could ring a certain way and sound a certain way, like how I want it, now I know it different. It's I mean, like niggas used to do it recording their voicemail. Right. Niggas record a song on their voicemail, so you know a nigga want to ring the song yeah, if right. they should have played. I had the ringtone on my voice. That, that, that was even the back in the day form of like, you know what I'm saying, like the future. Like right. when you had the, the the regular box answering machines. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then you come with cell phones where you could leave a voice message and customize it and yeah, the shit just play like that. It's yeah, like, yo, this yeah. shit the future. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? You just gotta go But that shit don't phone. last forever. It came a time where niggas couldn't help but leave some type of shit on the answering machine because niggas was leaving messages and that was the thing. Yeah. But now when texting come, all these forms of emails and all these forms of communication and now everybody got a phone. No, niggas just let their shit. Ways. Niggas don't even want their shit to ring. Niggas shit don't vibrate or ring like however the fucking shit ring. Right. Oh, hell right. yeah. No one for ringtone don't even want the shit to ring at all. Yeah. That like, shit crazy. Make my yeah. shit ring like a telephone. Yeah. yeah. That's basically. That's the old people ring. Okay, so, so, so take us back because like you said, we were talking earlier. I'm a hustler. I want to make sure I'm saying this right. You was quote unquote telling us about the time that you was locked up and you was getting out from, you know, rehabilitating yourself with the car wreck. Mm-hmm. So, how was that transition going through all that and staying focused? Like, what was that, 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 that mind frame at that time? Um, it was difficult, you know. The doctor said I wasn't going to be able to rap again. Right. You know what I mean? And I was in a coma for a period of time. When I came out the coma, I had amnesia. So I couldn't even remember like none of my raps. Like yeah. none of my raps, like even like I'm a, uh, well, yeah, I'm a hustler. Um, hotel, like mm-hmm. big records that I did a thousand times that I should know it. I ain't know none of the words. I couldn't remember the words. I look at the video and it's like, you know, like when the name on the tip of your tongue mm-hmm. and you know you know it, but you just can't find it in your head. You're mm-hmm. like, damn, what the fuck is this name? Like that. It's like, I know that I should know it because I see myself in it. Mm-hmm. But I don't remember the video. I don't remember doing it. Mm-hmm. I don't remember none of the lyrics. Yeah. So it took time for me to get my memory back and get healthy enough to be able to record. Mm-hmm. And plus they said I wasn't gonna be able to. So to get healthy enough, quick enough, get my memory back and start recording, making music, mm-hmm. I felt like it was a blessing, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the type bag I was in, like, you know, not really in battle rap mode like I normally be. Mm-hmm. It's as competitive. That's what I was going I was like more you. thankful to God like that. I beat that case. They was trying to give me life. I was not supposed to be here. Right. And it's cool when you do it and when you beat it, but you even see situations now. Right. Niggas is losing cases and getting wild time. Right. Like, yeah. So that could have been my predicament. Right. You know what I mean? Then I come home and I get in an accident, I could have died or forever lost my memory or not recovered the right type of way. Right. But I did and I started making music again, so that's the bag I was in, you know what I mean, on that project, bars. That's what I was gonna ask, how did that competitive spirit factor in, but you just said it, man, like, you know, but it was with more gratitude, bro, because you saw it twice, like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Two times, it could have all been over. Man. And even though I'm a hustler, you was talking about the ringtone and it was a big record, I was locked up like, you know what I mean, like two, three weeks before that album dropped. Right. So when it was crunch time, like it was time for me to go on the main promo tour, like to promote this big record that I got out, I'm locked up. So I can't do it, can't promote it right. You know what I mean? And I told you this like before real social media, so it's not like it's just spreading around on the internet and niggas can still post on your your page, you know what I'm saying, keep you alive. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, I couldn't really do promo because I was booked. Right. So to go through that, come home, and then start working on music again, then get in an accident, lose your memory, 
It's like, damn, I went through a lot. Like, right. you know what I mean? So. How long was that process? Um, <clears throat> I was in a coma for like nine, ten days. Yeah. Then I had amnesia for months. You know what I'm saying? But it's like it started coming back, you know, more and more. Like every day I would wake up and start connecting stuff and remembering a little more. And mm -hmm. More years to come back. Mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? Like I ain't forget my whole life. I forgot like 15 to like 18 years of my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. But anybody that I knew before that, like my mom, my name, like stuff, I knew all of that. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. But if it was somebody that I just recently met, even if it was like somebody I was close to, like Swiss. Right. Like I, it's like you looking at him, like you kind of like think like, now nah, I've seen him before or something. Damn. But you can't like remember like where you know him from. Like right. that. Right. And okay. I seen that shit happen on movies and TV shows and shit like that, like Never amnesia. That right. 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 But I ain't understand, like, how can you still know how to walk, talk, know how to do shit, but just forget? Right. Like, that don't, I ain't get it. Right. So that shit happened to me. Shit real, like. That's crazy. Did anybody not believe you, though? Huh? Was anybody like, no, you bullshit. You know me. You ain't running to them niggas like that. Everybody not, understood it. Not that I recall, okay, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I wasn't, like, dealing with too many people. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Just the people that probably came to see me at the hospital, and I was in a coma at first. Right. Once I woke up out the coma, I ain't feel right, so I left the hospital. Right. You know what I mean? I wasn't supposed to, right. but right. I left. And um, I was just in the house, like, healing up, so I ain't really come in contact okay. with, like, a bunch of people. Right. Damn. Yeah, okay, you okay that, boy. Yeah, but yeah. my family for sure, they they definitely knew. Like I was I was fucked up, like you know what I'm saying? So they knew that, you know what I mean? Yeah. They seen me in the coma, right. they seen me fucked up and they seen when I woke up not all the way there. Right, like I don't right. got it right, like you know what I mean? And this was the time that the record is 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 hot. Yeah, for sure. Shit popping. Your family telling you stories. Like, and you just don't remember. They just telling you this or just not used to you not having your memory, so they might say something or ask something and you don't really remember it. But you know, telling you shit, telling you stories, making you feel comfortable, right. showing you videos and pictures and right. stuff. And it's just like, you just start thinking, thinking, then you go to sleep, wake up, it's like you're closer. And after some months, I got most of my memory back. Right. Like. Um, only thing to this day I still don't remember, like I remember getting in the car, like that day when the accident happened now. Right. I remember that, like what I did before that and getting in the car. But like once the accident happened, I don't remember all of that. Only thing I remember is when I woke up out the coma. Mm. But like yeah. the rest of my life came back, even the raps. All of the reasons, like, why I wrote the raps, like, the science, like, the stuff I was, like, studying and doing, mm -hmm. like, all that shit came back. And that was a blessing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow, that's, that's, that's a real blessing. It's crazy. And you said the two-step came out of that, the song. Drinking My Two-Step came out of that incident. Yeah, that's why I made that song. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was still with J Records. They wanted, like, a party song like to celebrate the fact that, right. you know what I mean? And you know, that was the vibe, like up-tempo type party shit. Mm -hmm. And I just came with like, I'm a hustler, b-boy stance, them records that was like, you know right. what I mean, up. So they wanted something like that. But it's like, I was more on like, you know what I mean? Like the record that I had on that project, like I'm an innocent man, misunderstood. Like mm -hmm. that record I had, I was more on that bag. Mm -hmm. like, you know, that's not really party. That's just like a, that's like pain. It's like yeah. a heartfelt song. It's like some deep shit. Right. So I was more in that bag, wanted to shoot shit like that, but I'm signed to a label, so I don't got the final say-so. So, so right. 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 we had to come together. That's why I did Drinking Two-Step, but did it like that. Right. Like talking about the case, talking about the accident, 
Like we celebrating the fact that I'm home. It's on, yeah. it's on, it's on, and I'm home. Get the Patron and tell them that it's on. Like it's celebration time that I'm back. And they said I wasn't gonna be able to rap again. But now I'm shooting the video of you hearing my new record that I wrote after they said that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's like celebration time. Right. Yeah. So that's why I, I did it. The song got a whole back. new meaning now when I, I go know, listen to it. I'm bro. like, nigga, you know what the nigga went through? I'm home. Nice. You know what? what I'm saying? Like, what? Didn't have to go through that shit back to back, man. Like, back to back. In that shit. And then still had a drive to, like he said, he remember his drive. Yeah. He remember why he wrote it. He remember why he wanted to rap. Like, that one number God just yeah. putting it right back into you. And that's what I was about to ask you now. Like, what made you actually go fuck with the URL and do some battle rap and shit like that? What made you want to go fuck with it hands-on like that? I felt like that form of battle rap, I started. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, me and Freeway Battle that came out years and years ago, even before that, YouTube. Yeah. So it was no way for people to see it. Mm -hmm. Like, after that shit got established, they put it on there years later. Mm -hmm. But at you that know, time, people, before the tape came out, it was like just a rumor. Yeah. Let nobody know if that shit was real. It was right. one of them. Yeah. One of them. Battle rap. Yeah. Battle rap and Phil, he going crazy. And then the audio. Mixtape DJ got the audio. Mm -hmm. Took it from the VHS tape and made an audio and put it out on the mixtape. So people was just listening to it, riding, playing it, but they couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. Put you know a visual mean? to it. But I felt like that's the first time niggas seen niggas like you know, really hungry and being competitive, face to face, going hard at each other with no beat. Mm -hmm. right. Like that. Right. You know what I mean? And that's what like paved the way for <coughs> these leagues and this type of energy that started. Mm -hmm. So I always felt as though I was a part of it. I was going to events before I started getting back in battle rap. It was always like dealing with league owners and you know what I mean, fucking with battle rappers. Mm -hmm. I was always like feeling like I was like a part of the culture. I just was on some other shit. Right. Told niggas that they gotta give me 250,000 for me to come back and battle. Mm. I told them niggas that 20 years ago, like when niggas wasn't even getting a dollar. Right. Like, so it just seemed impossible. Like, right. how the fuck you going? Like, that shit don't even make sense. Right. But I just felt like it was, it was possible. And I, I stood on it. Like, I got offers. Um, they used to blog and talk about, Cass got off for 30,000. He ain't getting out of show right now. Why won't he take it? Right. And then he got off for 40,000. He should take it and come back. But they didn't understand it. I said, I'm not coming back till I get this number. Right. So the first people to offer me that number was like the King of the Dot team. Mm -hmm. King of the Dot, Alki David. They got mm -hmm. with him and he put together an event. And those was the first person to give me the money that I was asking for. Mm -hmm. Once I did that and the views went That's up. That's the motherfucker with the dog. Remember him? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> Once the views went up and people seen that it was a success, that's when the URL reached out, you know what I mean, to make it happen for right. It made that happen. Yeah. Man, you right. back in the bag now. Yeah. Hell yeah. And Stay um, in the last the battle I did with Hitman, that was with ARP, RBE. Right. So and that's Red Breed Entertainment. So, I mean, I ain't really connected to no league. I fuck with all the leagues. Right. Battle rap energy period, so. Right. I bounce around and make it make sense wherever it, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Wherever the bag at, yeah. For sure. It's hard though, man, that you can actually, you know, be in the, not just a rapper, be in the entertainment game right. and it's staying around for so long, bro. Like, what do you feel like? That's what been Battle the Rap did. It made me hungry time? again. Right. Yeah. Because learning the business, how shiesty niggas is in the business, going through ups and downs, right. seeing twists and turns, seeing people that tell you that they your brother and they love you and they'll do whatever for you, but when you go down through down times, they not even picking up the phone no more. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then you see you go through shit where you back up again and then they yeah, calling you again and then it's like, you see the shit that happened, you know what I'm saying? You see niggas act like they best of friends, then like, right after they separate, they talk talking crazy about, about each other, like that bitch ass nigga. Uh, but they just like, when you see how this business is, it's like hard to keep the love half the time. You right. know what I mean? Especially when you're getting robbed, you feel like you're not getting the right percentage for what you're doing or the right. work you're putting in. But um, 
a lot of people that's been in it as long as me are lose drive because of those reasons. Mm -hmm. But that's not why I do it for the business. You know what I mean? I feel like whether I do that for business or not, I'm going to still rap. Right. Because I said I wanted to start doing this since I was a kid mm -hmm. to be the best. So I'm still in that bag. Everything I do it for is for that, for that reason. Mm -hmm. And everything else comes second. Mm -hmm. Like when I first got my first deal, I wasn't worrying about the business or recording no music or nothing like that. I just knew if I had the best rhymes, I was going to get a deal. And now that I'm reinventing myself, saying bars is back, I'm taking that same approach. Mm -hmm. Doing podcasts, um, running around, doing different platforms, um, back rapping and making music and just showing right. people that I could do it. And right. once they see it, you get the right response. Because out of sight, out of mind, you just got to put yourself in people's face so they could be aware of what you're doing. Right. And you're going to get the response you're looking for. So that's the type bag I'm in right now. Definitely that. I, you know, you, I want to say you one of the underrated, most respected, you feel me, that I would like to say. Because even in the South, we adapted to your music ASAP. You feel me? And when you came out, I was a youngin. I was like, he ain't rapping like them up. Niggas. It's like, yeah, we knew you from up top, but it was like, like you said, y'all had like your own country swing. You had your own swing to it. Like you wasn't rapping like nobody from New York or up top. Yeah. So when you came out, it just it just struck with us, and I, I I've been fucking with it since day one. Appreciate it. Even if I was three. <laughs> I've been listening to him since I was three. Three and a half. Man. What nah, you go looking like for you, man. Where you want to take it to next? Nah, but you know the coach had just turned 50, so right. I'm in the same bag with you. Right. With legends that you know, what I mean, I've been around. Right. Yeah. Like when Grandmaster Cass and all them niggas was doing what they was doing. Yeah. Right. I was a baby too. Right. Like a lot of them niggas was doing shit before I was born. Like you know what I mean? But. Yeah. Once you fall in love with this shit, you do your research, you backtrack, and, and shit that's like legendary never die. Right. Yeah. But look back on that shit whenever you ready, and this shit's still gonna be effective to this day. You know what I mean? Big Daddy Kane and Rock Kim and G rapping, all of them niggas that I looked up to that inspired me to wanna do this shit. Niggas was doing that shit when I was a baby. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even my mom and my dad both rapped before I was born. Thank so you. this shit was around before I even came into the world. Hold on, your parents rap, both of them? Yeah. Together or just like separate and then they... <clears throat> both, like, you know... There was a group? <laughs> nah. <laughs> okay. I, I think, I think I my dad was like really rapping and going hard, but because he was like rapping and going so hard, and my mom was a fan of hip hop, she just started gotcha. putting together her own bars. Right. Damn. But she ain't like go as hard or take it as serious or want okay, to be famous okay, like okay. him. Yeah, like, yeah. he was the main one that's, like, really... So how would you say your style of rap? Because you you got the metaphors, the punchline. How would you say what's your style of rap? Bars. Strictly bars. Yeah. That's my style. Yeah. That's the main thing I focus on. Like, I've been doing this so long, I could do anything. Like, I could rock rap to any beat per minute. Like, that'd be difficult for certain rappers. They might be dope on one beat per minute, but they can't do them all. Right. Like, I could rap on any beat per minute on any topic about anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? But what I feel as though is most important is when I do rap about anything, it gotta have some type of bars in it. Right. It gotta have some figurative language, some creative in it. Something I'm saying that everybody in the room don't feel like they could have thought of. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's my main thing. You know what I'm saying? That's what I give a fuck the most about. Music came later. I told you I ain't had no beats, no demo tape. Mm -hmm. I ain't get a deal with no demo. I ain't had no music yet. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I wasn't connected to no producer. I wasn't connected to no music. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to make that yet. It's just about my bars, right. like it's about me. Right. So that's most important. I'm gonna always put that first. Everything else that I learned is just accessories to help me, you know what I mean, get to my final destination. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
But like, say for instance, something happened with technology or right. electric is out and niggas can't even pull up no more beats. Or producers, all the producers in the world just like, I, I ain't making beats no more. Right. And there's no more hot beats. That mean as, as a rapper, you just like, well, I can't rap no more because it ain't no more hot beats. Or you just oh, no, gonna you keep gonna rap. rapping off the same instrumental from back in the day that's already out? You just gonna keep remaking right. songs to them same beats? Or what? Who was some of the Me, artists that you I don't were? give a fuck. Right. Even if niggas stop making beats, that's why I start producing, because I can make my own beats, right. or I could just rap, bro. I don't oh. need no beat. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I was asking you this. Who were some of the artists that you were around that you feel like made you better as an artist? Um, that I was around personally. Yeah. Um, um, all, all of the legends that I ran into was making me better even before I met them. You know what I'm saying? But when I met them and I got a chance to be around them, like early in my career, I was in the studio with the GOAT, LL. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like a baby. I don't even got no album out, no single out yet. I just like fucking the mixtapes up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm going crazy, but I ain't even really that established yet. He is already the GOAT. You know what I mean? And I'm in the studio vibing with him. You know what I mean? And the way that that shit made me feel after looking up to this nigga before I even thought I wanted to be a rapper. Right. And being in the studio with that nigga and he really fucking with you and the shit that I'm saying, you taking heed and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? He not looking at me like I'm some, like he looking down on me, right. like he respect me for bars. So, you know what I mean? I've been in the studio and did records with Nas. Another nigga that I looked up to before I even got on, like, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. yeah. And these niggas respect me, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we in there smoking, we vibing, we coming up with shit. Right. And the records is out. It's not like, it's like something niggas, niggas could pull it up right now. Yeah, right. Cassidy featuring Nas and, and then go Nas featuring Cass because I'm on his yeah. records too. Mm -hmm. Like, we done worked on shit, I done work with the niggas that I looked up to. Been in the studio with Jay-Z when I battled Freeway. You know what I mean? He cleared that for me to use his vocals on I'm a Hustler. You know what I mean? A nigga I looked up to doing that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I have been in DMX house. Did the BET Cypher with him. That's like a legend. Like, you know what I'm saying? Niggas I looked up to. Niggas like Fat Joe, Noriega, niggas mm -hmm. that was already selling records and doing their thing was calling me to the studio to jump on records to Clef. When I first mm -hmm. got down, put me on records with Patti LaBelle and Wild Clef. Mm -hmm. It's like big records. The first video that I had out before my single was Big Business. And it was me, Ryan Osley, Puff Daddy, Snoop Dogg, Jada Kiss, Baby, and me. Yeah. And Snoop, um, yeah. Swiss Beats produced it. So it's like a beat produced by Swiss with Snoop, Baby, Jada Kiss, Ryan Osley, Puff, all of these big name people on the record, and then me. Right. I ain't have nothing, no. No records, I ain't have no plaques, I ain't do nothing yet. Right. So to be in them type of positions, and you know what I'm saying, and niggas respect you and then you execute, that's what motivated me. Mm -hmm. And like you even said, the ball with the dog house. So like out of all of the people that was on that song, Niggas still remember my shit. It's not like I was on a chorus. That was a verse, but niggas yeah. remember it like it was a hook. Mm -hmm. I got a large house, a dog. Yeah. And that was the first single, even before Hotel. Right, mm. right. You know what I'm saying? So it's dope. That shit crazy. You got an amazing story, man. Yes, you do. Sure. Amazing story. Yeah, do an audio book. <clears throat> That'd be dope. That's a goddamn movie you going around, book, goddamn bro. Philly, nigga, to battling. That's a fucking movie. <laughs> Got a story. How that nigga just went and ripped everybody, goddamn. Yeah, and created a real organic buzz, man. Before had the buzz off the radio, niggas didn't know his face. Y'all gonna know me in real life. Yes, sir. Nigga love to take over the city story. Especially you gonna do any Delphi. more uh, battles? Yeah, um, I had a battle set up with the uh, URL. We was supposed to be me and Freeway was supposed to battle again. Word. Word. Let's go. That's gonna go crazy. That's gonna no, be not happening. Quadruple platinum. Nah, That's gonna be okay. diamond it platinum. Ain't, it ain't happening though. No. Nah, it's gonna be right diamond now. platinum. I don't think it's gonna go down. Okay. It's like, um, it's been a long period of time we was been supposed to do it. You know what I mean? Something on the business side with them. 
You know what yeah. I mean? I've been ready. Right. I let right. niggas hear my rounds and all that. Right, like, right, battle right. rap niggas, I was like in the best shape of my life. I'm ready to go crazy on right. free. But they couldn't execute, they couldn't pay me the rest of the money, so we not gonna have no battle without the rest of the money. Right. Of course not. Yeah. But if you, if they walk in here and bring the rest of the money, put it on the table, or show me the cash app, or show me some shit like right. the money there, right. <laughs> then we could do the battle tonight, tomorrow. Mm. Still with the same rounds, or you gonna write some Let's more? Let's go. Nah, it's like time passed, so I'm gonna I'm a always write some more. Right. You know I, mean? right. I always write to the last minute. You know? I man, we never really got your reaction to the actual footage of the first battle coming out, man. And people, you know, that shit did crazy numbers online. What was your reaction to it when it got out and the people finally saw it? And people were coming up, you were like, yo, why you do them like that? Um, like when it first came, when, when it came out online, yeah. that was like years and yeah, years yeah, yeah. <clears throat> after it was already out, you know what I mean? Even people in my city had the VHS tape, so people been watching it and right. seeing it for years right. and talking about it, and a lot of industry niggas that I had relationships with was able to see it. So niggas been talking about it, so it wasn't like, you know what I mean? I was like going crazy when it got to the internet because I was already yeah, old. Like, man, yeah, yeah, I've been told to her this right. shit. Yeah. yeah, it right, was like right. kind of old. Somebody just now posting this? Yeah, you <laughs> should have been But I was happy it. about yeah. the technology, like letting a bunch of people <clears throat> be able to see shit like that. Because you reinvented, mm -hmm. you reinvented certain situations. Sure. Nah, it's just that look, that's one of the hip hop moments, man. If it's footage from. Like you said, 50 years. Right. That's a motherfucking moment. It's you know what I mean? Moment. Like, that's a motherfucking, like, Hell yeah. motherfuckers talked about that. Like, that, yeah, yeah. man, that whole little mixtape era, like that birth of just that's trying the first to get time shit. Jay-Z got the hammy, me, man. Right. Like, I looked up to that man. I'm listening to this nigga music all the time. Right. And that freeway battle was the first time he got the hammy. Like, you know what I mean? And you so Swiss it already know how I get busy. I'm already connected to him. Right. He already repping, telling Jay-Z that I'm the best. Jay-Z don't believe it, so this is my first time I could let him hear me. Right. You know what I mean? They heard it, but they got to see it. So it's dope. Like, Shit. I mean, to get around the GOATs, the niggas that inspired me, that I took bits and pieces from and right. put it in my pot to make my own stew. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. All of them dudes, they respect you. I've been around them, hung with them. Like, you know what I mean? And they all had good shit to say about me. So that's dope. Good shit, my boy. You the motherfucking gizzo. Come on, man. No cap, no collar cap. What kind of advice yeah, you man. giving to the up and coming, man? You know, like you said, you had, you, you well known, not just in the music industry, but especially in the Philly area where the rap, Every week, it's like every week somebody out of Philly going viral for, for like going Philly somewhere and spinning a crazy too. ass freestyle. And it seemed like damn near everybody in Philly can rap good in the motherfucker. It right. seemed like, cause like it's so many niggas just dropping shit out of there every week. You see some shit on a bootleg cab or nigga popped up at one of the radio stations and went crazy on a, on a freestyle. So hey. what kind of advice are you giving these guys to, you know, what type of shit to avoid and all that? Um. The best advice I could give you is believe in yourself more than anybody else. Stay dedicated and work hard. It ain't over till it's over. Right. Always keep it moving. Set your own destination. Keep going towards it. Right, right. You're a hustler, you're a hustler. Don't worry about how long the destination is or start to think about how long it's gonna take to get there. Best thing to do is just take the first step yeah. and then just start stepping towards it. Can you step? Yeah. yeah. That's the best advice. That's real stuff. That's real. I mean, it's real stuff. More movies and shit. I can't wait, man. <coughs> I'm looking forward to it. So, anybody watching, got some movie scenes open? Fuck you, Let me audition, man. Yeah, let me go. go. Can I get my butt in the movie right now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Man, we sure. can do this shit all night. No care. Nah, I like doing movies, though. You do? And I ain't tell myself I wanted to be an actor in the fourth grade. So I don't care as much as about the science. It's more right. fun. Right. But I got advantages because I do rap. So memorizing scripts and lines and then 
flipping it around, adding my own shit or rewriting the scene to make it doper is easy for me to do because that's right. all I do all the time is write. Right. So I, I'm definitely wanting to do more shit. Hell yeah, man. Man, well, what's your social media so they can link up with you and, and hit you and let you know they fuck with the episode and all that? Um, Cassidy underscore larceny, man. Cassidy underscore larceny. We Shit Liddy at Gmail for business. S H I T L I T T Y at Gmail. We need the name of that new project. Too. Bars? Yeah, Bars, Bars is, is back. back. Yeah. Bars is back. When is it? You got a date? Yeah, I'm about to be on it. Yeah. When, when, <laughs> that's why, when that's why I ain't put the date out yet because I'm okay. waiting for him to do it. I'm finna do it tomorrow. Oh, let's go. Let's you go. On there? Bars is back, nigga. Let's yeah. Hit me if you need some bars. No, no cap. Got bars. Let's go. Man. No cap. Bars is back, yeah. nigga. I'm on Cassidy album, nigga. You yeah, bullshit. Let's go. Pull up. No cap. No cap. No hat. No hat. No brim. <laughs> well, Cass, look, bro. I know this your first time stopping through here. Y'all. Yeah. Don't let it be the last. Come on, you man. know exactly oh, where Matter of fact, when the album drops, you gotta come back. Cause we gotta promote it. <laughs> nah, for sure. Yeah. No real shit. And you gotta kick one off with Bando. I'm definitely gonna come back because y'all niggas put niggas in a good mood, man. Oh mm. yeah. Laughing, yeah, having a good time, not so serious. Not like y'all got our terrier mood of just having fun, man. Mm -hmm. nah, shit, let I fuck, fuck with y'all, man. I'll be back. Yeah, because we ain't journalists. We just comedians. No, nah, but, but you got to come back. I know. <laughs> you got to come back and do the 85 with the band. Right, you be sure. down to do that? Yeah, for sure. Let's man, it up. give us about two songs. Yeah, we ain't like having that, too man. much. About two. Yeah. Put yeah. that on. Maybe two, oh, three, depending on how you feel. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. A hook, bird hook. Yeah. Bird hook, bird hook. Yeah. Yeah. It don't matter how yeah, you gotta do your part too. Yeah, I'm gonna do that when you know what I'm saying. Ooh, yeah, okay. That, that's hook bird hook, that's the one I'm talking about. Yeah. I knew I said it for a reason. Yeah, no cap. Well shit, man. We just gonna keep having the ghetto legends stop through here and fuck with us over here on the 85 South Show, bruh. None other than Cassidy. No cap. Let's be out of here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Let's take a photograph, yeah. bruh. For the motherfucking hall of fame. Shit, my nigga. Mm. 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 No hat. No hat. <laughs>